what, so you want me to come up with a joke about Brexit? It's, it's, it's not funny. It's just not funny. It's still not funny. Hello and welcome to another edition of Bloke in a Pub, which this time is sponsored by the Heisenberg Principle, uh, because every time you look at a Brexit deal, uh, it pops out of existence. There's another vote in the House uh, about Brexit, and it was uh, Theresa May put forward a proposition asking the House, were they happy with the negotiating position? Implicit in that was that uh, it would try and avoid a no deal. And it was defeated largely because something called the European Research Group, um, these are hardline Brexiteers, people who desperately want to leave, people like Jacob Rees Mogg, I don't know the man, but what I have in mind is that what he'd like to see is a return to landed gentry, the rest of us living in tenement buildings, eating Hovis, uh, and Elgar being piped in uh, wherever you go. His group abstained from the vote because they want to keep the idea of no deal on the table. The reason they want to keep it on the table is they believe that it strengthens Theresa May's negotiating position with Brussels. Now, on the other hand, when you look at it from the European perspective, they won't want to negotiate further unless they know that all the wrangling back in the UK has been sorted out and that Theresa May is arguing from a position of authority. We're kind of moving towards a deal still. It's two millimetre moves uh, and we're not quite there yet. The European heads will get together on March the 21st for a summit where they will finalise whatever's going to happen or not going to happen. And this is about eight days away from B-Day, as we're now calling it. Obviously, last minute negotiations, but the EU has, has form for doing this and hopefully by then the position in the UK will be much clearer. That all said, the EU probably has a vested interest in also keeping no deal on the table because they don't want to make it easy for a country to leave the EU. Because if it's easy for the UK to leave and get a great deal, France might follow, probably Italy, and they don't want to see that happen. Uh, so the idea being that if there was a no deal, there'd be a few days of absolute chaos uh, down at Dover. Uh, there'd be food shortages, potentially medical shortages, who knows. Uh, and that little bit of pain they're thinking might bring the UK back to the table for further negotiations. So again, they have a vested interest in, in, in this as well. We're going to know more uh, over the next couple of weeks. My feeling is that not much is going to change probably until we get to March the 21st and then we're going to have a frantic week where everything will be decided. In terms of the, the implication for investors, well I'm afraid it's, it's again, it's, it's, I keep saying it, but it is Groundhog Day. Uh, same thing again, we're going to see volatility and fluctuations both in sterling and then in, uh, in stock markets. Um, so increased volatility over that period. Uh, I'm, I'm not really expecting that to resolve until we actually get a resolution on Brexit and the deal itself. Uh, but that all said, that's what we're here for. So if you get anxious or concerned, we're here to hold your hand throughout the process and we'll be back with more soon.